Welcome, don't clap your hands. Hey. Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to the second video of this uh, chip carved bit of craziness. Uh, this was one of our production prototypes really uh, from a couple of years ago and uh, well it's been hanging around for a while so I decided to do something a little bit different. If you haven't seen the first, first video go and check it out. I uh, well I attacked it with a some chisels and uh, uh, this is my first uh, real attempt at chip carving anything like this so uh, there we go tis done now moving forward uh, there were plans I was wondering about carving out diamonds in between those and adding half bits and pieces and stuff oh I swore never mind and uh, the more I looked at this hanging on the wall over the last week, the more I liked it as is. Now, I have heard your cries. Um, there was a bit of a, uh, a consensus actually. And uh, I am going to fill each of these diamonds with resin. Because uh, while I like the 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 look and the feel of the 3d effect enough people have suggested that i try resin and see what happens that uh, well i'm going to do it I, I have no plans for this guitar it's not on order it's um somebody will be able to buy it when we're finished but uh, it is not for anybody in particular yet so what i'm going to do is i have to get scrapers and chisels and gouges and things and tidy up not gouges chisels and sandpaper I have to tidy up all of these so they're as perfect as they possibly can be. And that is going to be relatively boring, so we're gonna time lapse the hell out of that. Uh, yeah, there we go. Time lapse that. Have a listen to some music or something, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. At which point I will be joined by little Josh, who uh, plays around with resin a little bit more than I do. And uh, we're gonna do resin, with a little bit of stain and uh, I think, I really, really think some glitter would be, uh, would be a worthy addition. So, uh, why not? Onwards and upwards to the scrapers ho. To the scrapers ho. I can't do it. I'm just, I, I'm sort of going into battle with a scraper and a bit of wood and it just it just doesn't work really you get the the idea okay I'm tempted to just knock the corner off. Uh, I'm using this shorter edge of the scraper, but I don't want to cut into the other side of the shape. So, little diamond file and this grain is just really. What are we doing? I am now at the stage where I'm relatively happy with the final finish on the inside of these uh, uh, crevices. I've got a phone on. I've got a phone on and it's on and this is just not good. Should I maybe start this again? Phone off. Flight mode. 
professionalism. I remembered. Anyway. All right, I am back in. We have um, some holes in the top of this guitar. And uh, it's all clean. I've gone through. The, the final finish is actually much better having used a scraper rather than abrasives. So I'm really happy with that. And uh, I've just cleaned it up a little bit. Now, many of you have asked what I'm going to do to stop the resin leaching uh, into bits of the guitar that I don't want. And this is a problem that we had. This is a problem we had making these signs here. Uh, and the answer is simple. Uh, in this case, melamine lacquer. Shellac would do as well. Now, wood is obviously grown and created specifically to feed itself and it's got long tubes through which liquid transports. And this continues after death. So uh, if, you, if I were to flood this as is with resin, the resin would leach through sideways. And if the resin is stained, you'd end up with different colors sort of messing up the edges. And we don't want that. So I've got a paintbrush, I've got some metamine lacquer, and I'm gonna do some painting. Interesting. I am also going to be sanding down and completely refinishing the top of the guitar. So I really don't mind if I get this melamine uh, on the top. This is gonna be a messy process. <laughs> I love the color change when, when raw wood has finish applied. It's the little things like owning a guitar building factory that just made my life amazing. I don't know why I clap, I just do now. It's a habit, it's a thing, uh, I blame myself. How are you guys doing? We are back and I have a guest, how are you? Josh? Downstairs, this is Josh, he's a, are you an apprentice? Yeah. He's still an apprentice yeah. toolmaker. You are known as the Resin King. I mean, Sam sort of did that, just as a way to get me to do all the epoxy stuff, but I mean. So basically he's given you an honorific <laughs> in order to get you to do a lot of work for him that he didn't want to do. Pretty much, yeah. But you have lived up to it and proved that you actually are the Resin King, am I right? Or should yeah, I just I take you off the video? <laughs> you know what you're doing. Uh, okay. Um, I have not played with resin to this level, so Josh is going to be here and we're going we're gonna to fill this guitar and see what's up. Uh, I've obviously just uh, sealed the grain using melamine lacquer. I'm assuming melamine is uh, uh, compatible with this stuff. Uh, we're going to be using Art Resin. What's the easycomposites.co.uk is the website we got this from, or artresins.eu apparently. Um, why are we using this in particular? I've used it before. It's really good stuff. It's quite good at self-leveling, and it doesn't have many bubbles, so I thought it'd be the best product to use. Okay. We do have other resins that we've been using for filling and stuff that's less clear as yeah, well. Yeah, sort of an amber finish. Okay. And uh, well, there we go. So this is something I've never, never used. We are going to mix resin. We're not going to stain it. We did a little test just now with some yellow to sort of maybe think about going uh, sunny, shall we say. But uh, wasn't happy with that. Uh, it's a one to one mix and uh, we're doing that with weight, but we are also going to add House of Color flakes. These are ultra rainbow minis. Um, I don't know why I said it like that, but I did. Um, well, let's start mixing. Yeah, you do some mixing. This stuff is remarkably not smelly. It's, yeah, it's very safe. Food safe and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. We're going for 200 grams, yeah? 100 of each, yeah. Come on, go over. I'm on 99. 
Hold on, GA, please. I bet something else now. No. Oh, hey, there we are. Oh, no, over. 101. Is that 100? That's 100. Ha ha. Success. It's the little things. It really is. Uh, I'm supposed to be wearing these gloves. I currently am not. That's a little bit silly. This is just fun stuff, isn't it? It's. Yeah. Yeah? I do like playing around with epoxy. Have you ever put the wrong lid back onto one? Are we supposed to be sh shaking this? I uh, don't think it makes a difference. No. Okay. As ever, especially in this case, we're particularly worried about uh, bubbles because we do want it to be relatively clear. Oh, poop. The scale's just turned off. So after all that precision, um, I'm gonna guess it up at 10 grams in. I think that's where we're at. That will do nicely. I don't want to leave any resin around the All right, Josh, if you wouldn't mind mixing that up. Before we mix it, add a scoop of this Ooh, first. Yes, absolutely. Here we go. Oh, you've got, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, how much do you want to go for? I don't know. Well, put a scoop in and, and we see what it looks like. I don't want enough in there for it to settle in the bottom, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, Give that a try. We want it to be suspended quite nicely. All right, so this is gonna be a three minute stir, so we're gonna pause. Well, pause recording at least. And uh, do you notice how I managed to give the energetic part <laughs> to the apprentice? <laughs> I'm not ashamed, just lazy. All right. Can't mm, you pour it from the better will be? Okay, so the higher you pour it from, the less bubbles you get because the bubbles get pinched out. Yeah, I think that basically is it. Yeah, of the drip. Um, I've heard that before. Uh, and there are currently lots of bubbles because you were rather vigorous there with your um, uh, stirring. So, uh, if with this sort of thing, I've been told that uh, I have watched lots of videos on resin actually. Um, if you think you've got it mixed properly and it's all stirred in, always rethink that and, and go again. Uh, the last thing you want to do is fill something with resin and then four yeah. days later it's still, yeah. you know, not curing. This has happened to us before, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It's quite annoying actually. It's still just squidgy in the bottom. Yeah. Well, right, there we go. So it's, it's looking very, very opaque, and I think that's bubbles. So we're going to uh, we're going to use heat in a bit as well. Uh, I'm also going to do a test pour. I'm going to pour it into this diamond here. Watch me completely miss the diamond. is dripping, not pouring. That's not as liquid as I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay. Where's that? Spatula. Okay. Screw it. Scrape. Over. Surface tension. We've obviously added an unknown with these sparkles. Do you mind getting the, the heat ready, sir? Okay. Excellent. Is this indirect heat? Yes, yeah, over the top. We have bubbles. That's a little bit better. It's 
still quite cloudy in the bottom. So I've seen people using vibrating tables. The heat is better. The only issue I've really had with using heat is if you hold it in the same place for too long, it starts to boil and that could cause issues. Okay. Well, essentially that's looking rather good. It's not absolutely perfectly clear. Well, it's not bad. You can see some, some of the shape and uh, yeah, well, I will do as you suggest, sir. Wow, look the bubbles in that now. Is there anything to be said for letting it sit in? What is the, what is the open time of this uh, resin? Get about 45 minutes working okay. time. No, we've got, we've got a lot of, lot of time. I'm just gonna go insane now. Uh, let's start with the, the bigger ones. So if I hadn't insisted on adding glitter, we probably would be fine. <laughs> Still, what's life without experimentation? It's not too bad. So I'm going to go back and add a little bit more being a little bit careful. <laughs> okay. Uh, very bubbly, very opaque. You were right, I can see the bottom of those ones uh, a lot better now. So, so it's more fire really, is it? Have you tried vibration tables before? I have not, no. But the, the hitting technique is what we use for our fret rubbers, and that gets most of the bubbles out. Yeah, exactly. It works with latex and... Yeah. I feel like a caveman <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. Still, this is more fun. Fire. So I'm gonna to listen to you, Josh, and I'm not going to concentrate in one area too much. I'm really looking forward to this. So this is the beginning. I am going to spend a hell of a lot of time in the coming months playing with resin and sort of jumping on the bandwagon, really because there's so many things that we can do here. I want to avoid that fretboard if I can. That are really interesting. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave this for five minutes or so. Grab that drip quickly. And uh, we'll come back and see. Uh, we'll come back and see what these are looking like in five minutes or so. It's fun, isn't it? Hell yeah. Thank you very much for uh, coming on my show. <laughs> um, okay, no, honestly, thank you for coming up. Um, the open time is 45 minutes. I'm going to sit here for another 15 or so and just see how it develops. Probably hit it with a little bit more heat. I'm gonna leave this little camera on and we'll just fast lapse that so you can see what happens. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Click like and subscribe. You can buy this guitar if you want, or commission a similar one. Um, and if you ask nicely, we'll get Josh to come up and do more tutorials with me uh, for, for fun. I am properly excited by this. It's, it's gonna look awesome. And uh, it kind of means we're gonna have to go for a lack of finish. Do you think? 
Yeah, I think it'll look a lot cooler. Yeah, so, uh, well, this guitar, this is the second video. Uh, go back and watch the first one if you haven't seen it, and keep your eyes peeled for the third, because uh, you all just heard it here. Josh just um, volunteered to lacquer this guitar for me. So uh, it's gonna be lacquered soon. And uh, then I'll film the putting together and final bits and pieces and fettling, etc. And uh, then the guitar will go on sale. But um, most importantly, we've had the experience. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing the final result myself. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on. Stay cool. Stay in kids' school. <laughs>